Hi, I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling related things all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. So this past week was Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill, Friday the 13th. Let's get into it. The show opened with a 10 bell salute to commentator Don West, who passed away a couple of weeks ago, who was very instrumental in the beginning days of Impact Wrestling when it was TNA. As a matter of fact, he was all the way back when it was NWA TNA. Rest in peace, Don West. And then the opening match, which I will say I was very surprised was the opening match, was for the Impact World Championship, Full Metal Mayhem, between challenger Bully Ray and Josh Alexander. Bully Ray came out first, but then went and hid so that when Josh Alexander came out, he could come up and hit him from behind with a chain. This match definitely was brutal. It was definitely hardcore. And honestly, it was reminiscent of a backyard wrestling match, especially when they brought out the cheese grater. But the match was actually good and did tell a good story, especially when Tommy Dreamer came out and for a minute looked like he was going to be siding with Bully Ray. Josh Alexander at that point was zip-tied to the ring ropes. It looked like Tommy Dreamer was going to beat the crap out of Josh Alexander for Bully Ray. But it turned out, no, Tommy Dreamer is still on the side of good. But it didn't really matter because he got put through a table. Then as Bully Ray was beating on Josh Alexander, who again was zip-tied to the ring ropes, Josh Alexander's wife, Jen, came out and basically pleaded with Bully Ray to stop. But this led to Jen hitting Bully Ray right in his Captain Winky! And then hitting him with an acid drop. Long enough so she could free her husband. Then for the end of this match, Josh Alexander put Bully Ray on a table, went outside, climbed to the top of the ladder, dove through the ladder onto Bully Ray, and if that wasn't enough, put him in an ankle lock, which caused Bully Ray to tap out. Meaning Josh Alexander is still the Impact World Champion. This was going to be very tough to follow, as the opening match got an easy 5 out of 5. Yay! Then for the Impact Tag Team Championships, a four-way team elimination match. With challengers, the major players, versus Bullet Club's Ace Austin and Chris Bay, versus Heath and Rhino, versus the champions, the Motor City Machine Guns. First eliminated were Heath and Rhino, which honestly surprised me. I thought they were going to be the last ones to square off with the Motor City Machine Guns, considering they just recently lost their titles to the Motor City Machine Guns. But no, they were eliminated by the major players. But then, after a while, Ace Austin and Chris Bay eliminated the major players. But then, after some distraction by the major players, who were sore losers, and a dirt bomb from the Motor City Machine Guns, they got the pin over Chris Bay and retained the Impact Tag Team Championships. Which means they're still double champions as they are still also the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Openweight Tag Team Champions. This match was intense. It was four awesome tag teams. There was no way this was going to get less than a four out of five. Yeah! Then, Frankie Kazarian came out. Frankie Kazarian, who's been featured on Impact Wrestling for the last couple of months, however, was still under contract to AEW, came out to announce that he is no longer under contract with AEW and has officially signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. It was like a homecoming to him. Hopefully it'll work out on this one because it is a shame that as long as he's been a part of Impact Wrestling, he was never the world champion. Let's fix that. Then for the Digital Media Championship, Moose versus Joe Hendry. Who I believe in. The match was actually pretty standard until Moose kicked Joe Hendry in his Captain Winky. And then after this low blow while well, the ref's back was turned, Moose was able to get a spear and a pin over Joe Hendry, which made him the digital media champion until the new director of authority, who's filling in for Scott Demore, who a couple weeks ago on Impact Wrestling, was put through a table from Bully Ray. Santino Morella came out and said he didn't like cheating, so he ordered the match to restart. So because of this, Joe Hendry was able to get the standing ovation onto Moose and get the pin and retain the digital media championship. I will say this match was very entertaining and had a great twist with Santino Mirella coming out, but ultimately the match itself, like I said, was pretty standard. However, for the entertainment value, I will say easily got a solid 3 out of 5. Yeah! Then a 4-way to determine the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship. So it was a standard 4-way, not an elimination. With contenders Diana Perrazzo versus Master Slamovich versus Taylor Wilde versus Killer Kelly. Definitely a hard-hitting, chaotic match. But I will say a little too chaotic in my opinion because a couple of times I started getting lost. But can't say it wasn't entertaining. And it ended with Master Slamovich getting a snowplow on Taylor Wilde, dropping her onto Killer Kelly and Deanna Perrazzo so that they were hurt and didn't interfere as she got the pin over Taylor Wilde. Making Master Slamovich the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship 
Like I said, this match was very entertaining. But again, the chaoticness sometimes got confusing. But I would still solidly give this one a 3 out of 5. <coughs> then a Falls Count Anywhere in Atlanta match. Which, normally we just call it Falls Count Anywhere, but okay. Between Rich Swan and Steve Macklin. Which, at first, didn't get in the ring. Heck, we didn't even get entrances. Steve Macklin started the match backstage, attacking Rich Swan, And from there, went out to the parking lot area, where they encountered somebody who was leaving the arena. In the middle of the event! But eventually did get in the ring, just didn't stay in there very long. In fact, it ended at a walkway ramp, where Steve Macklin got the KIA onto Rich Swan and got the pin. This match was really good and entertaining, and it was a hardcore match, but honestly, for a Falls Count Anywhere match, I wouldn't say it was anything special. But it was good. Easy. Three out of five. Yeah! Then a match I was extremely excited for. Eddie Edwards versus Jonathan Gresham. I was excited for this because this was a great match. Two very gifted technical wrestlers going head to head. And exactly what you would expect out of these two. Back and forth, close call after close call. The intensity of a match that at any moment could end and go either way between the two. Keeping your eyes glued to the screen because you feel like if you're going to blink, you're going to miss the ending. And it went until Eddie Edwards got the Boston Knee Party onto Jonathan Gresham and got the pin. Then after the match, we had the return of PCO, who was buried by Eddie Edwards, which they alluded to as when he appeared, he spit out dirt. But whatever. That's entertaining. The match itself was great. Easily a 4 out of 5. Yeah! Then the main event for the Knockouts Championship. Title versus career. Mickey James being on her last rodeo, stating that if she had lost a match on her way back to the Knockouts Championship, and including the Knockouts Championship match, then she would retire. And now we were finally there. Mickey James versus Jordan Grace for the Knockouts Championship. Match was absolutely fantastic. Not just all the stuff that makes an entertaining match, like the close calls and the back and forth, which there was plenty of, the moments where you thought, okay, this is it, it's over. But of course, there's always that added drama when a career is on the line. We usually just don't know. Like, is this going to be their last match? All that drama and build up to a big finale? Or is this just going to be a story that kept them going and put some more drama into them getting the championship? We didn't know. Especially with Jordan Grace being built up as the powerhouse champion that she is. But after close call after close call, it ended when Mickey James got the Tornado DDT onto Jordan Grace got the pin, and became the new Knockouts Champion. And she was even able to celebrate with her family, including her son Donovan. This was an awesome match, a great way to end the night. I easily give this one another 5 out of 5. <coughs> so Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill Friday the 13th overall was a really good show. I've been saying this for probably a year now. Impact Wrestling is getting better and better. And this was proof. There was no match that was bad on this card. In fact, even the ones that I only gave a 3 to, they got solid 3s. As in really good, but just not quite good enough to get a 4. Almost, though. But then there was a couple of 4s and two 5s. Not only that, but the 5s were at the very beginning and at the very end of the night. Now, I did mention that I was surprised that they opened the show with the World Championship match. But I understood it later. Even though, in my opinion, as intriguing as the Mickey James storyline had been... It wasn't as good as the Josh Alexander Bully Ray storyline. However, it was more important. So I understand it going on last. But then I was kind of like, well, shouldn't they have just done the double main event thing and made the Impact World Championship the match before? But thinking about that, probably would have taken away from the Mickey James Jordan Grace match. Because I did not envy those wrestlers having to follow the opening match that night. And I would say that the opening match was the match of the night. But slightly. I would only say it was slightly better than the main event. Between the two, a very, very small margin. Both told great stories. Both were very entertaining. Both kept you on the edge of your seat. So by the end of the night, I came to understand why they opened with that match. Because we did kind of need some breather between that and the actual main event. Not to say that the other matches didn't entertain us. But obviously they weren't nearly as good as the opening match. If they had put that match on right before the Mickey James-Jordan Grace match, probably would have been kind of like when they did The Rock versus Hogan right before Chris Jericho versus Triple H. Chris Jericho versus Triple H was a great match, but we were kind of emotionally spent from the match before. So it was a good setup in the card, and it was just a great card overall. I like that they didn't go the route that they've been going for a long time, which is opening the show 
with an X-Division match that had absolutely no build-up, no real rivalry, and we don't really care about. They put that on the pre-show. Every match on this card had rivalries that were built up, except for a number one contenders one, but even that did fit. And the fact that we're going to be getting Masha Slamovich versus Mickey James later, I can't wait for that. So, overall, I will give Impact, Hard to Kill, Friday the 13th, a good, solid 4 out of 5. Yeah! So there you have it. That's my wrestling review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Impact Wrestling Hard to Kill, Friday the 13th. Love you guys.